Well, they've done it. The Cambridge Dictionary answers the question, what is a woman? They define a woman as an adult female human being. And they go on to add, an adult who lives and identifies as female, though they may have been said to have had a different sex at birth. That's a bit new. This addition is not subtle. A woman now can be a man who wishes to be a woman. Biologically, this is absurd, and it does have real ramifications, all of which disadvantage biological women. The Cambridge Dictionary has recently changed the definition of woman. That is unfortunate. It does not reflect biology, nor does it reflect the culture of most of the world. Even in the U.S., much of the population would not find the new definition to be acceptable. That caused me to ask, is this dictionary change significant, or how much should we care? Dictionaries are traditionally understood to share facts that are reality-based and universally acknowledged. In this case, neither one of those two things is true. Since dictionaries, in theory, tell us what is real and help us to interpret the world around us, this is problematic. Being a man or a woman has traditionally been understood to be linked to an individual's physical characteristics and chromosomal makeup. A woman is understood to have female sexual organs and XX chromosomes. Dictionaries describing men and women use male and female as descriptors of a man and a woman in their definitions. Man and woman, male and female, are all linked to biological sex. Neither gender nor sex is independent of physical biology. When we fail to recognize women as a fixed and closed category based on sexual characteristics and genetics, we encounter problems. There are at least three major negative outcomes that manifest. The first is that it disadvantages women. It interferes with their ability to pursue athletic goals. It takes away their right to privacy. And although some ideologues are untroubled, women are unwillingly exposed to men's genitals or put in situations where they are viewed in various stages of undress by men who are not their husbands. Punished. Travis Allen learned that the hard way. He was a girls' soccer coach at Randolph Union Middle School in Vermont. He was just suspended from his job without pay because he complained about a male student looming around the girls' locker room. Then the school, because this is North Korea at this point, punished Travis Allen's daughter, Blake Allen, for speaking about it too. Blake Allen is on the volleyball team. Blake Allen and Travis Allen join us tonight. We're going to talk to their lawyer in just a moment. Um, thank you both so much for coming on. Travis, first to you, did I misstate what happened? You complained about a man in the women's locker room and you were punished? Correct. I made a media post, or sorry, a social media post that referred to the male student as a male and I was punished because I misgendered him. You lost your job or you're suspended without pay from your job? Correct, as the soccer coach. So you were the creep in this. I, I have to ask, did other employees at the school take you aside and say we're on your side? Did anyone protest your suspension? Uh, none of the other employees did. Uh, other community members have supported me though, privately. It's, it's beyond belief. But, uh, thank you for complaining, by the way, at, at very least. <laughs> Blake Allen, what did you do wrong in the eyes of the school and how were you punished? I was in the locker room and the trans student walked in and, and there was, um, the rest of the team was in there and we were, I was really uncomfortable and I left and I told the school and they just shut me down and said there was nothing they could do and I was later suspended because I voiced my opinion that a male shouldn't be in the women's locker room and then when we filed a lawsuit they dropped the suspension. How, how, how old are you? How old were you when this happened? I'm 14, I'm a freshman. You're 14 years old. And when you complained about a dude in the girls' locker room, you got suspended? Yes. 
Who's just, can you tell us the name of the person who made that decision? Uh, Lane Millington. Yeah. And how, would, how did this adult communicate your suspension to you? What, what, what did you do wrong in the, in the view of this adult? Um, I think they were mad that I was telling people how I thought it was wrong and that a male shouldn't be allowed to be with us in the locker room. <laughs> You're 14 years old. Um, what, tell us what your classmates thought. Were they on your side? Yeah, a lot of my classmates were supportive. I think most people in the school are. They're just too scared to speak up because they see all the backlash I'm getting for it. Well, you're very brave. Because not dad only is was brave. I suspended, thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm supposed to do. I was going to do a restorative justice circle and write a letter of apology. To whom? To the dude? The trans student. To the to the boy who was in the girls' locker room. Yes. You have to write and a letter of I apology. I said I would rather have a five-day suspension than have to apologize because I'm not sorry. How for old was? My opinion. Well, good. God, God bless you. How old was the boy? <laughs> Fourteen. The second negative outcome is the almost totalitarian nature of the trans movement. Women students who are affected feel both victimized and hopeless as it seems that no one cares that their hopes and their dreams are being shattered. It is no surprise, of course, that men are stronger and faster than women. In fact, men who are unable to get to the middle of the pack competing against other men can easily beat women in most situations. For many women, any hope of success disappears as soon as they know that a trans woman is competing. This is the story of Chelsea Mitchell that we'll see in a second. All right, let's welcome Chelsea Mitchell. She's an NCAA track and field athlete. She's also joined by Matt Sharp. He's a senior counsel for the Alliance Defending Freedom. Thank you, Chelsea. I got to start with you now. You were at one point called one of the fastest girls or the fastest girl in Connecticut. And then I understand you would go to state, state championships and get beat year after year, four years, I believe, by a transgender athlete, male to female. Yeah, I mean, it was extremely disheartening and frustrating to get up on that line against male-bodied athletes and know that all my hard work, all my talent, I had no chance of beating these athletes and I couldn't possibly hope to compete with them. So what do you say to the NCAA who says, oh, let, let each sport, at least, at least jurisdiction, dictate what, what they want to do? I mean, come on. Yeah, there, there are so many examples right now we're talking about where trans men to women who, who've done a couple of years of hormone replacement therapy, they still have the same body. They still have the same, you know, larger wingspan, so to speak, arm span, bigger hands, larger heart, more lung capacity, right? Exactly. Um, I'm concerned that nothing's going to change and that if a transgender athlete wishes to compete in the female category, they're going to do so. And the same thing that happened to me in high school is going to happen at the collegiate level. A third negative outcome of this dilution of what a woman is, is the fact that there's an almost Orwellian movement to stamp out the, quote, old understanding of what a woman is or what a man is and to replace it with something else. That's an amazing overreach. From the beginning of recorded time, people have understood that human, humanity uh, is a mixture of men and women, a binary. There are two sexes, male and female. However, stating that in some places is now enough to get you into difficulty. I'm going to post the address of a video on YouTube called 2 plus 2 equals 5 and ask that you consider looking at it. When you compare that to the short video clip that we have from Ireland, some of the similarities are going to catch your attention and, uh, and perhaps make you think a bit. Uh, it is unfortunate that in this day and age, we have people who are unable to safely state what is a solid biological concept. Humanity is composed of male and female. So there are a number of negative outcomes. Hopefully, as we think about this change in definition, we will think about the consequences of that change as well.
To set this up, a high school student was in his class. The teacher was showing a video and apparently there was a website on the video and the teacher commented that the website was problematic because it said that there were just two genders, male and female. The student objected to that and was removed from the classroom for his comments. What follows is the discussion that he had with his instructor. You're entitled to your opinion. If but I am, then why would you kick me out of class? It's not very inclusive of opinion. Can I finish my sentence, please? It's not very inclusive. No, I'm sorry, what you were saying was not very inclusive. And this is an inclusive school. All right, so... So I guess he's trying to say, if you don't agree with us, we'll kick you out. Our school is inclusive, excluding you. <laughs> yeah, what, how was what I was saying? Because I was saying that what's wrong with the website is that there are more than one gender in well, this country. That's Bible. your opinion. That is my opinion, and that is an opinion which is acceptable in the school. I'm afraid yours, which you're saying that there's no such thing as anyone other than male or female, is not inclusive. Scientifically, there are just two genders. Depending on what I get, I get agenda that. But you're, you are choosing to make an issue of this because I said, "Are you really going to?" Here? That was your opportunity to, to 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 keep quiet. You made the issue with it on the website. You said, "Oh, this website doesn't have more than two Murray, You were clearly given an opportunity not to pursue it. You chose to do so. Yeah, because I think it's. You silly. chose to do so. Yes, that's the key question. You chose to do so. I think it's silly to have anything other than two genders. So that okay. Could anything you please, else is could a you please opinion. keep that opinion? to your own house. Gender, under threat. In fact, why is everything so sexual these days? So the concept of two genders right now is gone. It's totally gone. That's what's happening right now. The concept of two genders is a thing of the past. It's over. Thank you. Not in the so school. you get to put your opinion out in class, and my no, opinion. No, I, I am not. My putting opinion my, has to stay inside my house. I am not putting my opinion. I am not putting my opinion out. I am stating what is national school authority policy. Okay. Well, it's not scientific whatsoever. Not every policy is scientific, Brian. Uh, sorry, not every science. Not every policy is scientific, Murray. And you can't come out here and say that I'm not being inclusive when someone says something I didn't you disagree say with. You, so you kick, I said what you were saying you, was not being inclusive. You kicked me out of class. If, if, if you want to have a discussion about it, we could have done it, had a discussion. You don't have to kick me out of class I'm and sorry, waste 30 minutes I'm, of my time. Or I could have been down revising, doing something else. Instead, I state something I believe in. You kick me out of class for 30 minutes and okay, I'm waiting on the Take court. this somewhere else, Murray. You can make an official complaint. I'm Please not going to make an official complaint. Why not? I just think it's... So I know what you think and I know what... The authority thinks. I know what the authority's point of view well, is very thinks. clear, very clear that we make no discrimination on the grounds of various. I wasn't making discrimination. I'm simply saying there are two genders, male and female. Yeah. Anything I'm... else is a personal identification. I'm sorry, but you chose to make an issue of making a point which is contrary to policy. There are many English speaking people who do not agree with the changes made in the Cambridge Dictionary. They recognize that it is a move to compel recognition of a falsehood. The question is, is it just a tempest in a teapot? Does it really matter? Even our own government doesn't seem to be able to define what a woman is. Well, I'm going to suggest that women should certainly care. They need to care. Ideologues are seeking to dilute the meaning of what a woman is and to erase the gains of the past. Why let society erase you while government and men oppress you? Men should also care. Women should be protected and not abused. Don't let men push your daughter or your sister or your friends out of the place which they can rightfully be in. Don't let them be removed, effectively removed, from women's sports. Protect their modesty. Keep them from being in situations where they are subject to possible assault or sexual abuse. In fact, we should all care because we are headed into some form of a dystopian nightmare where an elite cabal determines what is real and what isn't. A place devoid of free speech and flowing with compelled speech a world where 2 plus 2 equals 5 and all resistance is futile. 
Matt Walsh rather famously asked, what is a woman? The answer can't be what our ideological betters tell us. We are still able to think and we are still able to reason. We still recognize truth. When you are told that a male can be a, become a female, it is an untruth. No matter how much effort is expended, no matter how many laws are passed, no matter how much money is spent, a man can, at best, only pretend to be a woman. This change in the Cambridge Dictionary does matter because language matters. Erica Jong has said in, in this quote, language matters because whoever controls the words controls the conversation, because whoever controls the conversation controls its outcome, because whoever frames the debate has already won it, because telling the truth has become harder and harder to achieve in an America drowning in Orwellian newspeak. Erica Jong is, of course, referencing the 1949 novel written by George Orwell entitled 1984. There is an interesting quote from that novel. It says, every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and building and street has been renamed. Every date has been altered, and that process is continuing day by day, minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. It's a little bit sobering, actually. The solution to the current situation is difficult and it is discomforting. It has come to us through Alexander Solzhenitsyn. He saw that we are all faced with a choice. If we will stand and risk our comfort and perhaps even our lives, tyranny and totalitarianism can be thwarted. He encouraged rebellion saying, the simple step of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. One word of truth outweighs the world. He also recognized the seriousness of the moment, stating, no one can bar the road to truth and to advance its cause, I am prepared to accept even death. The Cambridge Dictionary is playing with words. Let's not play with words any longer. Yeah.